Hi everyone, I'd like to thank you all for coming today. Um, my presentation is on implementing a vegetarian diet and I plan to show you how to implement a vegetarian diet. Um, I'm going to give you examples of foods that vegetarians should eat in order to attain proper nutrients and I'll also explain to you how to attain those nutrients. Um, I'll help you understand the amount of food you should eat in order to either maintain your weight or if you're actually looking to really diet. Um, by the end of the presentation, you'll be able to find out how many calories and specific nutrients your body needs and uh, how to maintain optimal functioning and acquire those calories from a solely vegetarian diet. First, I want to start with the, uh, the benefits of vegetarian diet. Uh, it gives you a proper balance of foods that you should be eating. A diet should be based on variety. It gives you a better knowledge of the essential healthy foods that will combine together to make everything in your body work functionally. It helps reduce numerous health risks, including obesity, type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and certain kinds of cancer. And it helps to emphasize emphasize food's importance as a fuel for your body. Not just, food isn't just to eat, it's meant for something. What you put into your body is what you're going to get out of it. For macronutrient and caloric needs, your macronutrients are your carbohydrates, fats, proteins. Um, it's really important to monitor your caloric and macronutrient needs versus your actual intake. I mean, even if it's writing everything down, I'll show you how to calculate stuff here in a minute, but you should always have a tally of what you're eating every day. Um, vegetarian diets should ensure proper protein, carbohydrate, and healthy fat consumption. Variables for the amount of calories you need to consume includes age, height, weight, sex, and activity level. Um, to determine your caloric needs, you can use numerous online calculators. They're all over the place, but the one that I find most helpful is actually the USDA one. Somebody showed it in one of the demonstrations earlier on, but it's, uh, just go to choosemyplate.gov, this is the main page, and then you go to get a personalized plan. Cool. <laughs> Can't help that. Basically, it gives you like a thing where you put in your age, put, you put in your height, your weight, your uh, gender, and your activity level. I already did it for myself, so I'll show you what it was for me, and you'll have a better understanding of uh, the actual amount of calories you need to eat. And once you determine the amount of calories by going to a calculator, you should determine the macronutrient ratios to achieve your calorie goal. What I mean by that is like the distribution of what percent you should eat from each macronutrient. This is a good basis for a proper vegetarian diet. I mean, you could use a little more fat, but carbohydrates are your main fuel as it is. They get broken down quicker and they give you energy quicker than digesting a protein or a fat would take. Um, so to determine the proper amount of calories needed for each macronutrient, just multiply the percentage by your overall suggested calorie count. Um, once the calories for each macronutrient is determined, divide that number by four for your proteins and carbs and nine for your fats to determine the amount of grams you need to consume each day. And that makes it a lot easier to just look at labels and see how many grams of total carbohydrates or unsaturated fat here or saturated fat to determine um, exactly what you should fit in. What they gave me, they told me I should be getting 3,200 calories a day. Um, that seemed it's okay. I probably eat about that on a daily basis, not in line. <laughs> but it's just combining all your foods and eating really healthy foods isn't going to be that bad of a thing for you if you just don't do calories. Um, so 45% of carbs. So I aim to get like 1,440 calories from carbohydrates a day, which is like 360 grams. I aim to get like 240 grams of protein and 89 grams of fat. And for your fat levels, you should try and get probably about 75% of it unsaturated. A little saturated fat won't hurt you, but it can lead to problems with cholesterol if you have too many LDLs, which is bad cholesterol. 
and the healthy fats will contribute to increasing your HDL, which is good for reducing uh, risks of heart disease and lowers your overall cholesterol levels. Uh, these are the essential foods that you really need for any healthy diet, whether you're trying to be vegetarian or not. Healthy whole fruits and vegetables, can't really stress that enough. I mean, these are simple concepts, but you really just need to think about what you're eating. Lean proteins, like soy, um, nuts, complex carbs and fibers to help pass everything along properly. Um, healthy fats, just to give your body the proper cushioning, I guess you would say, <laughs> to help everything maintain itself. Fats are really important for you. You don't really think about it. Anybody who sees something and it's like, oh, that's full of fats. Well, it depends if it's unsaturated or saturated, because if, if it's completely saturated fat or the majority of it's saturated fat, then yeah, that food item probably isn't good for you to eat. But if it's unsaturated fats, it's not going to hurt you, as long as you don't exceed your daily calorie amount. These are examples of some nutritious vegetarian food. All these actually combine uh, two different forms of protein to get your eight essential amino acids out of it. Whole wheat pastas with vegetables, some marinara sauce or something. I mean, if you eat cheese, you could, you know, make like a casserole. Whole wheat bean burritos, if you eat cheese, you know, bean and cheese, throw some salsa, some vegetables in there. Uh, rice with beans or vegetables. You can make a chili and put it on some rice. I mean, they're all really good things. Then fortified cereals with soy milk, that's like one of the biggest things you can possibly need to eat, I would say, as a vegetarian, because there's so many different vitamins and micronutrients that you can't really get without a proper uh, fortified cereal in your diet. Peanut butter and fruit sandwiches, I mean, mix it up. That's a cut up some like Melon and peanut butter is really good. Strawberries and peanut butter. Like you don't have to use jam, just cut up fruit. It makes it that much more nutritious also. Um, like tofu and stir fried vegetables is really good. Um, the amount of consumption you should have on a daily basis is pretty much determined based on what you really feel your body is telling you to. Like eating larger amounts of healthy foods isn't really going to cause that big of a concern if you're simply just hungry to eat more. Like, your body is burning it, it's telling you, I want more food now. Yeah. Like I was saying earlier, it's a, a fuel. If you don't have enough fuel in your body, it's gonna tell you you need it. And then under consumption may cause deficiencies and micronutrients, even not like, obviously macronutrients if you're not getting enough calories, but it'll lower your overall health quality and possibly reduce uh, immune system response. Um, acquiring, my, uh, acquiring micronutrients is really important because there's numerous ones that uh, are basically found only in animals, including iron, which you can find in fortified cereals, which is an awesome source for pretty much all of these. Apricots, raisins, asparagus, peas, and lime beans are also good sources of iron. Um, B12, obviously fortified cereals and soy milk. You can get like all the B12 you need out of just one bowl of cereal and half a cup to a cup of soy milk. And if you don't like cereal or soy milk for whatever reason, you're gonna pretty much have to use supplements for B12. Um, vitamin D can be acquired simply by going outside and getting some sunlight. Also milk and mushrooms, or milk and mushrooms, but it's not active in the foods. Calcium, uh, from milk obviously. Dark leafy greens or broccoli and zinc. You can get it from nuts, cheese, rice, or oatmeal, and then omega-3 fatty acids. You can get it from flaxseed or walnuts. <coughs> Maintaining a dietary plan. These are just the key things to maintaining a good plan, whether it's vegetarian or whatever plan that you live by. Um, staying focused and informed on your foods. Like, know what you're eating know what you're putting into your body, know if there's, you know, outbreaks of foodborne illnesses and anything. Um, 
look at eating right as a way of life, not as dieting. I know I've been referring to it as a dietary plan. That's to me is a different definition than dieting. Because dieting means cutting your calories in order to hopefully lose weight. Um, but sometimes that doesn't work out because your metabolism can completely shut down in the long run. You gotta experiment with uh, different macronutrient distributions to try different diets. So like try a little higher protein, a little higher carbs, or even a little higher fat, depending on what you want to try and do. And mix up your foods and create combinations of flavors to keep things interesting if you're kind of learning a vegetarian diet. And now I'd like to quiz you. <laughs> Alright, number one, true or false, it's okay to eat more than your employer can call for in order to maintain you. Alright, I got one true. <laughs> it's okay to under eat today because you went over your suggested calorie count slightly yesterday. Um, variables that include caloric needs include age, physical exercise. Those are three. Gender. 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 Yeah. And a good plan includes fresh fruits, vegetables. I was lean protein, complex carbs, and healthy fats. That was what I was trying to And a good distribution of macronutrients for a vegetarian diet would be 45% carbs. I think I heard it. <laughs> <laughs> I know I heard the 45% carbs, I heard the 30 to 35 protein, I think someone said 20 to 35 with that. What's the best way to acquire vitamin D is it vegetarian? Sunlight! Vegetarian diets help to emphasize foods you said. Fuel. Alright. If your grand, if your diet calls for 1,600 calories for carbohydrates, how many grams of carbohydrates should you consume daily? Four. Four. 100? 140. Yeah, 400. <laughs> All right, now that you all determine your, know how to determine your personal calorie goals for sufficient health and receive more information on these benefits of a vegetarian diet, I hope I possibly made some of you consider evaluating and changing up the way you go about your dietary needs. Um, are there any questions? Anyone? No? All right, well, I thank you for coming to the presentation. I uh, hope you all have a